All right, let's take a break from all the unused and early content. Today, I want to show you a rat's life. It's a rat game that's been delayed by a year. Wait, 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 a year? Oh man, why though? Actually, give me a second. It's about a rat's life. I just want to know why it was delayed. Really? Twitter DMs? That's the best you could do? Oh yeah? But aren't there only like two other rat games? Oh! There was that one movie licensed one. What was it? Oh yeah! The Rat Chef. So I wanted to find a new silly genre, rodent-like. I'd say the name fits perfectly with a lot of the recent genres, like Metroidvanias, Roguelikes, Souls-likes, which I'll later mention about five more times. To help me define this genre, I made the rodent meter. The red part is for rodent lights. These would be games that feature rodents more prominently than most games. Games like Vermintide, Dishonored, A Plague Tale, that one has some cool rat tech. Games that just feature rats as a random common enemy wouldn't qualify for this in my opinion. Even though Fear has a pretty cool rat. Fuck. The yellow area is for rodent likes. It's mainly games where rodents are featured as the protagonist. And the green area is reserved for true rodent games. Ones which don't shy away from treating rodents like they are, well, rodents. Games that fall into the yellow and green areas will be the focus for this video. Alright, let's get to it, starting off with one of the best looking games on this list. Ghost of a Tale. The aesthetic of this game is kind of a mix of semi-realistic and fairy tale art styles, which at least in my opinion is the highlight of this game. It does come with a good story, with some great characters and intriguing environments that keep wanting me to explore all the new areas as I gain access to them. Even if the mouse looks fucking good, I found the gameplay to be... Well, very okay. The movement is well done and responsive. The stealth elements, however, are super basic. Like throw bottle and distract guard levels of basic. Those two elements were greatly improved upon when compared to the first early access release. Of course I checked it out. But I have to give big props to a stealthing. They did a genius move where all the hiding spots also act as save points. Honestly, my biggest gripe with mouse game are the fetch quests. This might as well be called Ghost of a Fetch Quest. Pretty much 90% of the game is find a specific amount of a specific object and bring it to a specific character. Half the time finding the required item is like an easter egg hunt. Hey, if you like fetch quests, that's fine. All the more reason to check out the game for some. But it has finally made me realize that I don't really enjoy those types of quests in general. The other thing is that this game can range from being slightly janky to stanky jank. It's full of minor bugs, with one softlock that I encountered, which I was able to fix by simply restarting the game. I can excuse the minor bugs, as these are indie devs trying to make a double-A game, mostly off of an Indiegogo budget. On the rodent scale, this is a super mouse game. I mean, again, look at him, that adorable idle animation. When you sprint, he runs on all fours, he can do little stealthy steps, and it even comes with multiple sets of clothing. You can dress him up as a pirate, as a little thief. Actually, maybe I won't spoil all the outfits. On a more serious scale, I've actually beaten this game and for me personally, it's a 7 out of 10. I recommend that you check it out. And if you do, I have some quick tips for you. Get the Red Mist upgrade first. Pick up everything, even if it seems useless. And don't be shy to pay for hints. That's the best use of money anyway. Tales of Iron. This one is more of the challenging type coming with Souls-like combat and a vengeance story. If you're someone who gets scared off by anything resembling Dark Souls, don't write this off yet. From what I gather, this is considered to be one of the easier Souls-likes. It also comes with free difficulties, which could be argued is very un-Souls-like. Strongest resemblance to the genre lies in the combat with some added tells. 
Depending on the attack, enemies will emit a specific colored symbol to communicate to the player what their action should be, which is admittedly a big assist, but also greatly reduces the trial and error aspects. You will still get your ass beat by the later bosses, however. Some of the attacks will sometimes feel incredibly unfair. To add more to that, this game has a weird perception on side quests, as you'll notice that the majority of them are needed to progress the game. There's also this bullshit fall damage. Luckily, you can't take too much fall damage from it, but it triggers from ridiculously low heights. Especially for a rat. I've quite enjoyed the story. Don't want to spoil too much more of it, but something pretty cool happens about halfway into the game. None of the in-game characters actually speak, but there's a narrator telling the story as you progress, and it's narrated by none other than Doug Cockle. Same dude who voices Geralt in English versions of the Witcher series. Obviously, I'm talking about the video game series. Which brings me to the rodent scale. This is... not a very rat game. You can easily forget that you're even playing as a rat half of the time. The creatures of each kingdom can be shuffled around and would barely impact the game. It does get some bonus points for having the in-game rats based off real pet rats. On the serious scale, this game receives a solid 8, and I've actually beaten it as well. I highly recommend, and it's potentially a great starting point for those looking to get into Souls-like games. I've got two little notes for anyone considering picking this up. The currencies cap out at 99, and don't forget to use the purple bottles like I did. Tooth and Tail is a more fast-paced and unique take on an RTS game. With that being said, my playstyle is anything but fast-paced when it comes to these games. Not a huge RTS guy or anything, pretty much the only one I play is Age of Empires 2. But man, do I fucking suck at this game. I can be competent enough to beat single-player missions, but as soon as I was thrown into an actual mission, the only way I won was by taking way too long. To the point where the bot actually completely ran out of resources, and I was able to steamroll it from there. There's some interesting but vague lore in this world. Also, the artwork of the characters is astounding. I love how most of them carry the equipment that actually makes somewhat sense for that animal. I do have a few gripes with this game. My biggest issue is that it automatically queues units. A way to avoid that would be to simply sell the building, but I'd highly appreciate being able to train units when needed, instead of having to go through the process of rebuilding again. And another note, the character you control basically acts as the cursor, so the leader's movement speed can suffer huge impacts depending on the terrain. Which admittedly is interesting, but can also be frustrating at times. You do get the option to bury and practically teleport back to your territory, which makes sense for a rat. On a rodent scale, this is a decent rodent game, as there are more than a single type of rodent. You could make a similar argument as with the previous game about swapping the animals, but just look at this squirrel for a second. It's a drunk, revolver-waving little bastard, and it has this movement animation. On a more serious scale, I haven't actually beaten the game, but from what I've experienced it would get at least a 7. Just yeah. It's a super loose score, but if it interests you, check it out. If I end up beating any of these unbeat games eventually, I'll post an update in the comments. And, huh, I'm out of rodent games. Actually, there is that one thing. <sighs> Alright, fine. Here's the meme game that I was suggested to. Haha, he's doing a meme pick. Which is a competent 3D platformer, especially for a movie license title. Of course, it has some jankiness to it, like the time I couldn't grab a pole, or when the game crashed and the camera kept spinning upon relaunch, or when this happened. The thing is, you have to press a specific button to grab or latch onto things. But the more you play it, the more it makes sense why they made it like that. Also, what's up with rat games and shitty fall damage? This one punishes you really hard for that. Shouldn't rats have big fall damage resistance? The game introduces you to all the unique mechanics straight off the bat, and there's a decent range of them, but none of them really do anything truly unique. I honestly think they should have drip-fed the players these features. Might have made it a bit more engaging. The stealth in this game is straight up annoying, and chase sequences are fucking bullshit. At least zoom the camera out a bit. The minigames are kinda enjoyable, but most of them are extremely bland. Now, most of you might think that I'm psychotic for even suggesting this, but it has some small similarities to Mario Sunshine of all things. Mainly how you can go from the main level, which are often semi-open, to finding a stack of food and being transported into a dream world where you play through a linear platforming challenge. Sunshine must have had at least some influence here. When it comes to the cutscenes, you'd expect snippets from the actual movie, 
Instead, the developers made their own variation on the movie, a slightly darker one, one where Linguini is mostly a mute, Remy seems to help him out of pure pity, and constantly has to run errands for his rat clan. He also inexplicably becomes instantly good at helping Linguini cook. There are points that can be earned throughout the game, and then spent on various bonus stuff, ranging from concept art, game modes, levels, cheats, fire trail, and nightmare difficulty. On a rodent scale, oh, no! this is indeed a very Pixar rat game. On the review scale, I'd roughly give it a 6, but it's also a very loose score as I've only played half of it. Because I simply lost interest, it just got boring. Since this is an Abandonware title, I'll be putting up a link to where you can get the game in the description. Abandonware basically means that it's a game that you cannot purchase in any official capacity anymore. Apparently there are many different Ratatouille games. The one I played here is the PC version. The Xbox 360 and PS3 versions have a lot of major adjustments made to it. The PSP version is like a soft sequel to the movie. Then there's the DS version, and the Game Boy version... Eh. Alright, there are some more games I want to mention, but I just don't have as much to say about them. So let's call this a lightning round. Or a rat rattling... rat... uh, whatever. Rats Instagib is a PvP precision shooter and as of this video it's sadly pretty dead. You play with these insta-kill railguns, which can also jump boost you. It's really just a rocket jump. I was lucky enough to randomly stumble upon an active match. Sure, there were the obviously too good at this players, but I was at least somewhat competent. Wait, they said that before, didn't I? I also managed to get a private game going. If the dev still cares, he should honestly make the deathmatch portion of this game free to play. There are six game modes available, one of which is a co-op survival mode. You can easily play this one solo, but they can get pretty boring and can be easily cheesed by just standing further away. Bots are also available for deathmatch. While not the perfect replacement as they never rocket jump, each bot seems to have different behavior, which is cool. Like one bot in particular would save its shots in an attempt to get like a high aim percentage. The music is super bumpin'. And you get cosmetics as you play, with the only alternatives to acquiring them being through the Steam market or trading. On the rodent scale, it's... Eh... They did call it a rattle field. I recommend and Loki want to revive this game somehow. It's like the last Steam game of a 4-pack still available. Retropolis. It's a card-based tower defense. On the surface, sounded great. But it roughly played like a Flash game. Which isn't necessarily bad, Guess that kinda makes sense since this is a mobile port. Just generally felt unpolished. Moving units is annoying and takes way too long. Random events and cards were just kinda boring. I quickly lost interest so it's simply not for me. I definitely see other people enjoying this though. On the rodent scale... What do you mean Ratropolis? They look like hamsters! I feel like I'd get screamed at if I didn't at least mention Transfer Mice. I'm one of those people that played this a lot at one point in my childhood and then never came back. Let me just say, the game has aged poorly, but I still had a good time with it. My nostalgia with the game likely helped in that department. Upon my replay, I also unearthed some memories, like hoping that I don't have to know some exploit to complete a level, and that whatever shaman gets picked is more competent than I'd ever be with that role. I also remember that getting cosmetics for free was a huge slog. Maybe it's a bit better now? I don't know. On the rodent scale? Sure. Those are decent mice. Mousebot is an inoffensive autorunner mobile port. Yeah, I guess we're down to mobile games now. I am a bit ashamed admitting to enjoying this one as it's kinda bland. One huge plus is how this game has zero of those infuriating force tutorials that mobile games often have. Instead, the developers decided to implement an invisible tutorial of how each trap functions. But all traps really boil down to one same thing, proper timing. In a game where you are always moving forward, the timing aspect can get frustrating real quick in later levels. At least give us the ability to adjust the bot's speed. I've also noticed that most of the early difficulty comes from trying to get all of the collectibles. On the rodent scale, is this the first robot rodent game? Probably not. For you VR heads out there, check out Moss as I am unable to. Not sure if it's a good game exactly. 
Kinda looks like they could have easily done a non-VR version. Just thought it was worth a mention. Rad Simulator. I fucking hate this game. It's one of those GOAT Simulator knockoffs. While sure, these games for their time were surprising, if that's the right word, it's just that this intentionally glitchy joke game genre died faster than I could say Ratatouille. At least I... hope it did. I like to think the joke game genre evolved over time into developers making games of funny concepts. I'd say Goose Game being a prime example of exactly that. And I love that game. Next game. Wait, this is the same game, except now I eat pizza and become bigger. Ugh, next game. Ooh, oh man. I really am scraping the bottom of the barrel now. Alright, let's look to the future of rodent games. The Spirit and the Mouse is a puzzle platformer. Sort of. You can't actually jump, instead you have to climb stuff. Which actually makes sense from a rodent perspective. At least in this demo, the game has too much dialogue, to the point where I would have skipped all of it if I wasn't recording gameplay for this video. There's a bunch of these guys on the map which you have to help out. Their objectives are nothing to write home about, but at least throughout the demo there was a decent variety of them. Granted, there was only three of them. If most of the game will play like this demo, I can see it getting stale real quick, especially if it doesn't introduce various gameplay elements as you play through the game. Also, a message to all developers. Please, for the love of God, when I move the camera thumbstick up, I expect for the camera to actually look up. Never put zoom controls on the same thumbstick you control the camera with. Thank you. On the rodent scale, yeah, this is a pretty mouse game. A pretty mouse game. I've played its demo during one of those Steam Next Fests. It's hard to judge a game based solely on its demo as more often than not, a demo is secretly a beta or even an alpha version of a game. Like imagine rating DRG based on its pre-alpha build. Yeah, that's basically what's happening here. This demo would get a 6 out of 10 for me. I do see it getting better by release. Sadly, that's the only demo I was able to check out. Actually, there was this one other game, Curse of the Sea Rats. They had a time-limited demo for the next fest, which I still have the files of, but when trying to run it, I get through the intro, and then the game freezes, leaving me hardlocked. It looks like a metroidvania beat-em-up for what I can gather. Might be worth a check. Also might be very wrong and it's just a metroidvania. Ratten Reich, which is an RTS game where you seem to control squads of rats throughout various levels. They are also promising vehicle customization, which would be great. Last time I was able to customize vehicles in an RTS I think was like... What was the game called? Warzone 2000? Something like that? I don't know. Admittedly, this game is kinda cheating as these are anthropomorphic rats, which more often than not are really just a hairy human with an animal head. But I'll let it pass, just due to the lack of rodent games really. Overall looks pretty promising, just keep in mind this is a Kickstarter game, so it can really go either way. Now we arrive to THE game. A Rat's Life, The Cat Conspiracy. There's honestly a lack of rodent games. Not to mention there being practically zero first-person ones, that Instagib game being one of the very few. What makes this game stand out for me is that it'll focus a lot more on the rat aspect. So far it seems to fully embrace the fact that you're playing as a rat, rather than just shoving in a funny haha rat into the game. This one seemingly aims to turn rat behavior into in-game mechanics. They can scratch stuff out of the walls. They can make like a little dirt house. They can run on all fours, and of course, like everyone already knows, all rats use their long-ass tails as a weapon. I honestly have no idea if this will be good, but the one-year delay could suggest the developer has a lot more ideas he wants to put into the game. Hope I accidentally didn't put too much pressure on the dev, this is like his first game breaking out of itch.io. Yeah, I did do a bit of a deep dive into the developer. He did a lot of cool art stuff, and in one of his previous games it seems like he actually played as a mole rat. Does that count as a bonus rodent-like? Still, we have no rat game. Maybe you do in the future, but... Yeah. A rat's life. A rat's game. A rat's tail. A rat's quest. Wait, what the fuck? Whoa. This actually looks pretty good. Alright, fuck it. Wishlisted.